How Christopher Nolan Recreated Oppenheimer's Nuclear Bomb Explosion Without CGI Everything Nolan does, film lovers embrace. In Oppenheimer, he exceeds expectations by creating a practical nuclear bomb explosion. Imagine a world of renowned professionals, a legion of filmmakers, conglomerate studios, and millions of audiences eagerly anticipating a film you have created. This scenario is both fascinating and scary. Yet the incomparable auteur, Christopher Nolan, exceeds expectations with his unique interpretation of stories. Sheer determination and mad passion capped with gifted skills are among the plethora of reasons that make Nolan what he is as a filmmaker. From making a self-produced black-and-white indie film to becoming the most influential filmmaker in history, with an accumulated box office revenue exceeding $5 billion, Nolan stands as one of the most beloved star directors. He has been embraced by the world of cinema for his unfathomable contributions to the craft. What distinguishes the auteur is his penchant for taking up challenging narratives that swim against the meandering stream. May it be the evolved interpretation of the Gothic tales, Dark Knight trilogy, deliberate dancing in the realm of time, Inception, Interstellar, Tenet, Memento, or exemplification of the cat and mouse genre, the prestige and insomnia, Nolan owns the genre and establishes insurmountable standards. His upcoming feature, Oppenheimer, is a different beast in comparison to Nolan's previous accomplishments. Nolan is a rare breed who strives to minimize the usage of CGI to illustrate the pivotal scenes in his films. As a filmmaker, he believes in creating a visceral impact and delivering the most authentic cinematic experience possible. Therefore, he resorts to capturing much of the visuals on camera and enhancing them on CGI later. For a filmmaker renowned for his visual spectacle on screen, the minimal usage of CGI might come out as a surprise. When Nolan announced his next project on the father of the atomic bomb Robert Oppenheimer, the netizens went bonkers, speculating whether Nolan would set off a nuke for the film. Rightfully so, he did it without the usage of CGI. This astounding revelation by the crew of Oppenheimer significantly heightened expectations for the film, and here is a comprehensive take on how Nolan recreated the nuclear bomb explosion without the use of CGI in Oppenheimer. How Nolan and his crew achieved nuclear explosion without CGI. Everything Nolan does, the film lovers embrace. The filmmaker goes above and beyond to exceed the expectation the world puts on him. With Oppenheimer, the auteur outproved his previous achievements by successfully creating the look of a nuclear explosion without the use of CGI. During an interview with Total Film, Nolan expressed that this endeavor proved to be more challenging than his past endeavors. He further explained, I had Andrew Jackson, my visual effects supervisor, on board from the early stages. We explored practical approaches to capture various visual elements in the film, ranging from representing quantum dynamics and physics to recreating the Trinity test itself. My team and I also tackled the task of recreating Los Alamos on a mesa in New Mexico, facing extraordinary weather conditions. These practical challenges were crucial for the film's authenticity. A significant portion of the filming took place in New Mexico, where the crew meticulously recreated the explosion amidst turbulent weather conditions. Nolan has consistently emphasized his belief that CGI diminishes the stakes in a film, as it eliminates the sense of danger and makes the audience feel safe, which is not what Nolan wanted to achieve with Oppenheimer. For the Trinity explosion, the special effects crew, led by Scott or Fisher, employed a traditional technique known as forced perspective, using scaled-down models. However, Fisher proudly referred to these models as ligatures instead of miniatures, as they were made as large as possible while maintaining manageable proportions. The trick is simple, the closer these props were positioned to the camera, the larger they appeared, effectively conveying the desired visual impact. Following the prop sets, the intense fire during the explosion was an amalgamation primarily of gasoline and propane. According to Fisher, this combination was chosen due to its high energy output in terms of the pyrotechnic aspect. The addition of aluminum powder and magnesium aimed to recreate the blinding flash commonly associated with a nuclear explosion. 
The team intended to create a visually striking effect that would leave a lasting impression on the audience, akin to the brightness experienced during an actual nuclear event. Their ultimate objective was to captivate viewers with this remarkable display and stimulate discussions surrounding it. Nolan described this innovative approach as a fusion of grand-scale experiments and minute details. He characterized the achievement as highly experimental, involving a combination of a black powder explosion, petrol, magnesium flares, and carefully orchestrated interactions between various oils and particles. These elements were carefully selected to maintain the explosiveness, visceral impact, and dynamic nature of the explosion. However, the biggest challenge was to create the mushroom cloud infamous for mammoth explosions. Mushroom cloud is a typical layman's term used to describe the quintessential byproduct of a nuclear detonation. In a conversation with Empire, Nolan revealed that visualizing the fiery abstractness within Oppenheimer's brilliant mind is an insurmountable challenge. To achieve that veracity, palpability, and the tactile explosion of the Trinity, the crew sagaciously photographed the whole explosion created by TNT in a multifaceted viewpoint and did compositing using computers which enabled the team to add multi-layers to the explosion. In a way, Nolan set off a bomb, but it's not an actual nuclear bomb. What makes Oppenheimer Nolan's most ambitious project ever? It's no secret that Nolan has a knack for creating realism in films, may it be the truck flip in Dark Knight or the rotating hallway in Inception. Nolan's renegade creations go to the extent of creating a dust bowl, interstellar, or handing a plane in the middle of the air, the Dark Knight rises. The determination or urge to go the opposite way of CGI can only be attributed to the filmmaker's ravenous passion to create the utmost pristine cinematic experience. Coming to Oppenheimer, Nolan perceived the film as the most responsible film for its complex subjectivity. He further explained, the subjectivity of the story is everything to me. We want to view these events through Oppenheimer's eyes. And that was the challenge for Killian that I set him to take us on this journey, that was the challenge for Hoyt van Hoytema, my designer, and my whole team. While the filmmaker is known for assembling the biggest stars in the industry, Oppenheimer set new standards by bringing explosive acting legends such as Killian Murphy, Matt Damon, Emily Blunt, Robert De Niro, Gary Oldman, Florence Pugh, Rami Malek, Benny Safdie, Dane DeHaan, Jack Quaid, James Darcy, Kenneth Branagh, and Casey Affleck. If not the Trinity, these stars will certainly explode through their acting prowess. Talk guys, this movie is going to be giant in, I want to see this explosion in theaters soon, with that giant screen, to feel inside the movie, it's going to be cool, now, if you want to receive news and follow-ups about this movie, sign up and leave your like, okay? Even friends, welcome to our family. 7 Days Hollywood